One more day. Tomorrow is election day in the United States. The latest on the race for the White House is next on Now You Know. I'm Rob Snow. Deeper than the headlines. The answers you need to know. This is Now You Know with Rob Snow on News Radio. Tomorrow is the big day. It will be November 5th, Election Day in the United States. Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump with the White House on the line. And the Harris campaign just released a new ad on social media. It is called We Rise. In America, we rise. We rise early. We rise late. We rise to every challenge because freedom demands more than just words. Freedom is the sound of steel striking steel, the hum of factory floors, the buzz of small town diners opening at dawn. It's knowing that what you build belongs to you. But somewhere along the way, the balance shifted. Politicians started looking out for themselves and billionaires, while working Americans were left to bear the weight. This, though, this is where we draw the line. Meanwhile, Donald Trump spent some time yesterday campaigning in Georgia, a battleground state where he was promising tough action on illegal immigration using a centuries-old law. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. Can you imagine? That's when they ran it a little tougher. They weren't so politically correct in 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. And I am hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. Donald Trump has been using a new line at his rallies, too big to rig. That he wants election results that are too big to rig. We must defeat Kamala Harris and stop her radical left agenda with a landslide that is too big to rig. So on Tuesday, see, it's very simple. For two weeks, I've been saying, call this number, that number, you know, early voting, late voting. We should have one-day voting with paper ballots, voter ID, and proof of citizenship. Yes, I'm a United States citizen. And you know what? The voting would be concluded at 9 o'clock. The winner would be announced, and the loser would be announced at 9.30. You would save hundreds of millions of dollars. Kamala Harris had a rally in Michigan yesterday, another battleground state. She was in East Lansing saying her campaign offers people a fresh start, not fear and division. We have an opportunity in this election to finally turn the page on a decade of politics driven by fear and division. We are done with that and we are exhausted with it. And America is ready. America is ready for a fresh start, ready for a new way forward where we see our fellow American not as an enemy, but as a neighbor. We are ready for a president who knows that the true measure of a leader is not based on who you beat down, it is based on who you lift up. And Michigan, you know me, I am not afraid of tough fights, evidently. 
The bottom half of the tickets have also been busy. Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, made a stop in New Hampshire yesterday with a speech that was also heavy on the issue of illegal immigration. The scale of Kamala Harris's border crisis is difficult to fathom, and it's one of the main drivers, by the way, of the increase in the cost of housing. You're going to have skyrocketing housing costs when you have American homes go not to American citizens, but thanks to Kamala Harris, to people who don't even have the legal right to be here. She's rolling out the red carpet for them, ladies and gentlemen. New Hampshire schools overcrowded with children who don't even speak English, which deprives our kids, deprives our kids of a good education. New Hampshire hospitals, overwhelmed emergency room wait times have skyrocketed because we've got people in this state who do not have the legal right to be here. And I believe that we are a compassionate people and we are always going to be a compassionate country. But the compassion of the American president belongs with the American people who have the right to be here, not with folks who came here illegally. Harris's running mate Tim Walls was in Atlanta yesterday going after Trump over the potential for spending cuts that threaten Obamacare and Social Security. Now, if he gets back in the White House, he's promised, yeah, hell forbid that, let's go. If we get back, if he gets back in, he's talking about a $2 trillion cut in spending. J.D. Vance specifically said to do that, they will go after Social Security. And they're starting to get a little cocky and saying the quiet stuff out loud. Speaker of the House, the guy that no one knows because it took like 10 weeks to get one from them, (laughs) this guy says they're going to gut the Affordable Care Act. But you know it. You know they're going to go and try and get rid of it. Donald Trump is holding four rallies across three states today. North Carolina is two events in Pennsylvania and then Later tonight in Michigan, Kamala Harris is spending the day exclusively in Pennsylvania, first in Allentown, and then a late-night rally in Philadelphia where special guests include Lady Gaga and Oprah Winfrey. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know on News Radio. Questions. Now you know with Rob Snow has the answers on News Radio. A new political week is underway in Ottawa, where, in addition to waiting for the results of tomorrow's U.S. presidential election, liberals are dealing with an emboldened premier of Alberta. Danielle Smith not only survived a test of her leadership at a weekend convention of members of the United Conservative Party. She came out of that vote with 91% support. And during her speech to delegates at her party's convention, she made her position clear on Alberta's oil and gas industry. The province is ready for a fight with liberals and the Democrats in the nation's capital. They have failed. Alberta's economy is booming, and we aren't slowing down for any Liberals or New Democrats in Ottawa or any New Democrats here in Alberta, for that matter. (laughs) We will build new pipelines, oil and gas facilities, petrochemical plants, hydrogen plants, and more because Alberta is an energy superpower, and that's another thing we will not apologize for either. Let me be clear, we are not phasing out any of our oil and gas industry. In fact, we're going to unapologetically double our oil and gas production while and we'll lower the emissions the smart way through technology and by sending more of our clean oil and natural gas to Asia and the United States. And Stephen Kimbo can throw as many temper tantrums and concoct as many green schemes as he wants, we are not going to budge an inch, ever. But undeterred, two high-profile cabinet ministers in the Trudeau government are giving a briefing to news reporters today, pushing ahead with the Trudeau government's plans for an emissions cap on the oil and gas sector. Under the Trudeau government's plan, Canadian oil and gas producers will be required to cut greenhouse gas emissions by about a third 
over the next eight years. Federal Environment Minister Stephen Gibo has always said the oil and gas sector has to do its part to help lower greenhouse gas emissions. And the Natural Resources Minister Jonathan Wilkins has said Canada has an obligation to lower greenhouse gas emissions. So Canada has an obligation under the Paris Agreement to achieve our own emissions reduction goals, um, just like every country around the world has. And so any development of industry, whether it's LNG or anything else, needs to fit within the context of Canada's overall climate plan. Certainly, we are looking for ways to assist allies to help them reduce emissions. That's not just LNG, that's hydrogen, that's critical minerals, that's a whole range of thing, different things. But if you're going to make the case for LNG, you actually have to make the case that you can do that domestically and you can tie it directly to the displacement of heavier hydrocarbons like coal. And you have to recognize that in order to actually bring emissions back to Canada under Article 6, you actually need to have a country that's far ahead of its emissions reductions goal. I'm, I'm not aware of any G7 country that is ahead of where it needs to be with respect to emissions reduction. So it is, it is um, you know, I've, I've heard Premier Mo, for example, say we should, get, uh, we should get credit for some of the low emission um, agricultural products that we actually sell to the world. Well, that's like saying Denmark should get credit when they actually sell wind turbines to Canada. Like at the end of the day, we get the jobs and the economic opportunities associated with the things that we do here, but we have to manage our own emissions and we have to try to help our allies do the same thing for them. The Smith government in Alberta is running advertisements all across Canada warning Canadians of what it says would be some of the consequences of an emissions cap on the oil and gas sector. For example, it warns of slower economic growth, big job losses, and higher prices for things like groceries. While that back and forth between Alberta and Ottawa rages on, inside the House of Commons in Ottawa, very little is getting done. The House of Commons is sitting this week, but... Business continues to be stalled because of the government's refusal to produce documents related to the so-called Green Slush Fund. That remains a matter of privilege in the House, and until that impasse ends, no other House business can be dealt with. Michael Barrett has been one of the Conservative MPs leading the charge for the opposition on the Green Slush Fund. As soon as they, uh, as soon as uh, Justin Trudeau's ready to uh, end the cover-up of this $400 million scandal, involving their green slush fund, turn the documents over to the RCMP. Uh, then, then we can, of course, get on to the next Liberal scandal. But this is, of course, uh, exceptional, quite the argument the government's making. There's been a crime. It's uh, worth 400 million Canadian tax dollars. And instead of calling the cops, they want to call a committee. The information needs to go to the RCMP, and then we can deal with the next set of misdeeds of Justin Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. One Liberal cabinet minister with his hands full these days is the Labour minister, Steve McKinnon. Now, there is no strike or lockout at Canada Post yet. The two sides are still talking. Neither side has issued a 72-hour notice. McKinnon has said the Labour Department is very active in trying to bring the two sides together. Well, as the Labour Minister, we're obviously active in trying to facilitate a, a collective agreement and we want uh, the two parties to agree and for that agreement to be ratified. Is there anything more that the government can be doing or is there any further action the government can be doing to try to not have a strike again? Well, we're applying all of the uh, resources of the Labour Department. We, uh, we work between the parties. Um, uh, the Canada Post can speak for itself. As the Labour Minister, we're working to uh, try and facilitate an agreement. It's not just Canada Post. There's also what's happening on the West Coast with ports in British Columbia. A union representing more than 700 foremen is accusing the BC Maritime Employers Association of acting recklessly by threatening an industry-wide lockout that would close all of BC ports. Last Thursday, the union issued a 72-hour notice for job action that could begin today. Hi, Rob Snow. This is Now You Know, and this is News Radio. No question goes unasked or unanswered. Now You Know with Rob Snow returns on News Radio. Newsday panel is uh, coming up right after the news at the bottom of the hour. Talk about the U.S. election tomorrow. I will be part of a special broadcast for uh, all across uh, the news radio stations all across Canada tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Could be a late night. I'm going to have to take uh, uh, have to take a 
a nap in the late afternoon, I think, David. We're in store for a late night tomorrow night. What do you think? I will be taking a pregame nap for tomorrow night. And I, I'm not even working. I'm just watching it at home. <laughs> I know. I I told the boss uh, when, they, when they asked me if, uh, if I would work on election night, U.S. election night, I said, well, I'm going to be up anyway. Yeah, so I, I may as well contribute in any way I can. I don't know how everything's going to turn out, but I don't even know if they'll be... I don't know if it'll even be all resolved by tomorrow night. To tell you the truth, David, I don't know what's in store for us. If it'll be over by midnight or over by five in the morning or over by December 5th, let alone November 5th. So we'll see what comes of it. How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Had a fine weekend. Lot Watched lots of football this weekend. Yeah, it didn't turn out pretty well for our team, Dave. The Red Blacks. Yeah, that was a... One and done. One and done. Uh, They lost against the Toronto Argonauts in the CFL Eastern Conference semifinal. So the the finals are are all set now. And it's going to be Montreal and Toronto. So that'll be a classic matchup, Montreal and Toronto. Toronto is, man, they look good against Ottawa. They put up 58 points against Ottawa, my goodness. And uh, in the West, it is the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I think it could be, well, I think the Blue Bombers are going to win the West, but I, don't, I really don't know who's going to win the, the East. I think that's pretty much a toss-up right now because the Argos are playing so darn well. They had a terrible start to the season, but uh, they're getting hot at just the right time. How did you deal with the time change and the rolling back of the clocks? Well, the fall is the easy one, <laughs> right? You find I, that the easy one? I yeah. find the, yeah, when you fall back, I find that easy. Springing forward in the spring is definitely the tougher one for me. Uh, as always, though, a shout out to any any of our colleagues still working the overnight shift in the radio business. The fall back is truly the worst time to work an overnight because you get a whole extra hour to work. Right. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, I don't do well with this whole daylight saving time business. Falling back? I really don't like falling back, David. No? No, no I don't like the fact that it, it gets dark before 5 o'clock in our part of the country. I, I just don't deal with that very well. Well, it's too dark too early. What you can do, and some people do this, Rob, some people just refer, refuse to participate in daylight saving time. <laughs> How do you refuse to participate? Well, our our esteemed public broadcaster, I noticed, published an article about this. They found a guy living in St. Catharines, Ontario, who says um, he started an experiment four years ago, and uh, he just leaves his kitchen clock on standard time, and uh, he uses his cell phone to make sure he doesn't miss appointments, but... He, he okay. li- inside the confines of his home, he lives on standard time all year long. So you can just do that's that. That's hilarious. Okay, that's funny. Bit of a weird uh, Yeah, in the last week, the, uh, the, you know, the government of Quebec said it was going to, uh, to ask Quebecers what it thought about you know, changing the clocks twice a year. And I thought, well, what if we don't do that? And Ontario continues to do it. Yeah, everybody's got to do it I, at I, the same I time. I live right on the border. I live right on the border. I'm always going to be an hour late for work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got upstate New York and the time zones, and uh, I don't know. It does feel silly, okay. though. All right. When we uh, come back, it'll be the news day panels. Lots to talk about today. We're on the eve of the election in the United States, and there's lots happening in uh, in the Canadian political scene as well. We'll cover you, cover you off coming up right after the news here on News Radio. Critical thinking is not dead. Now you know with Rob Snow. Returns on News Radio. The Newsday Panel. Yes, it is time for our Newsday Panel. Kate Harrison is with us today, Vice Chair at Summa Strategies. Hello, Kate. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Great to hear from you. Gary Keller is uh, Vice President of Strategy Corps. Welcome back, Gary. Great to hear from you. How are you? Great to be with you. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, I mean, the biggest story in the world is the election in the United States. Tomorrow is election day in the United States. Uh, Kate, what impacts could there be on Canada, depending on the outcome? 
Well, there's going to be major impacts regardless of who's elected. I think that there will be less swift change if it's a Harris victory than it would be with Trump. Um, but both are protectionist politicians. <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, we will have the Kuzma uh, deal to renegotiate regardless of who's at the helm. And so it's going to be a matter of kind of seeing how how big the change is. And again, with Trump, I think it would be a bigger one. And uh, the future of that deal looks a lot less certain. I'm not sure that the current government, Rob, has done much to prepare for either eventuality. Um, we are still very, very reliant on the U.S. for trade. And that's not going to change. But they haven't done much to diversify our trade relationships. And that is going to leave us very exposed if it is a Trump victory and even if it's a Harris victory. So the government hasn't put in the work, in my view, of trying to make us less reliant on the U.S., uh, and that could leave us uh, pretty hamstrung when Kuzma renegotiation comes back around. Okay, so Canada-U.S.-Mexico free trade agreement, major, major issue there, uh, according to Kate Harrison. Uh, Gary, where do you see impacts on Canada, depending on the outcome of this election in the U.S.? Yeah, I, I, huge impacts for the Canadian economy, no matter who wins. As Kay points out, you know, politics has really skewed to sort of the protectionist view, uh, and that's true whether uh, you're a Democrat or a Republican in the United States. I mean, it was uh, only about a month ago where uh, Kamala Harris came out very explicitly and said, if I am elected president, I will institute a review of Kusma in 2026. Now, to be clear... What is on the books and what, what can actually be triggered is a review, not a renegotiation. There's, there is a big difference in that. Still, uh, her coming out and saying that very explicitly a month ago was, was a massive signal because I think a lot of Canadians who have been sort of sleepwalking through uh, all of this saying, well, you know, th- th- what are the actual impacts, assume that if Harris would win, there would be no review of Kuzma. But it appears now no matter who wins, uh, that there will be a review in 2026. Uh, to be one of the 10 U.S. senators who voted against Kuzma. And so she's trying to differentiate herself with Trump on that point. Look, you know, Kate makes some very good points about the impact to the Canadian economy. I, I don't think we can ignore, too, the questions, especially if in, in, a, in a Trump victory, but also of a Harris victory, but especially in a Trump victory, of Canada meeting its 2% NATO right. target, that is, that we spend 2% of our defense spending, a 2% of GDP, uh, a NATO uh, that was agreed to by all NATO leaders uh, back a few years ago, because Trump has said, I'm not paying the bill alone, and I'm counting on all the NATO leaders to step up and say exactly that, that they're going to pay the bill, and we don't have a plan, no matter what was concocted on the back of a, a napkin by Prime Minister Trudeau, to sort of kind of maybe, you know, dog ate my homework, get to that 2% target, no matter if it's Justin Trudeau facing off uh, in, in, in Washington or Pierre Polyev, that is going to be a very, very live issue that I know everybody is wrestling with in Ottawa. Do you agree with that, Kate, the 2% NATO spending target? Yeah, that's going to be a big issue, particularly given uh, the current government has given themselves quite a lead time to meet that target. I think 2032 is when they had planned to hit 2%. And then it was uh, revealed last week that actually their calculations were wrong. And even if they do everything they said they were going to do, I think we're somewhere closer to 1.57. So there's going to be a huge impact there. Also, just on our commitments in Ukraine. Um, Trump is far less invested in that conflict, I think it's fair to say, than uh, than the current Biden administration. Canada uh, has, in some ways, not all, but in some, punched above their weight in terms of Ukraine donations. That's uh, a half billion dollar effort that they have committed to um, uh, in terms of our involvement in Ukraine. And so uh, what does the future of that conflict look like? And by extension, Canada's contributions to the to the region uh, would we go it alone, um, particularly if we have a Trump administration that's not really counting some of those donations towards our uh, towards our two percent GDP? That's going to be another uh, major point to look at. And I would also just say, Rob, particularly given the oil and gas cap announcement today, energy security. I think that that's going to be a huge topic, uh, regardless of who wins. Uh, particularly now that Canada has signaled that, that we are intent to turn off the tap which would leave the U.S. exposed uh, and trying to purchase oil from uh, non-allied countries. 
Okay, that's interesting. What do, what do you think about this idea, uh, Gary, that the, the Trudeau liberals are hoping for Harris, but they know how to deal with with Trump and also that uh, Polyev might be best positioned for Canada in case Trump wins? What do you think about that? Well, I look for the. I think for their own sanity, the Trudeau Liberals and especially the people in the Prime Minister's office are hoping for a Harris win because I think they believe that that will not be as much of a, a challenge. But, but at the same time, politically, the government has been in such a difficult spot for so long now that in order to try to change the polls around, it is looking for exogenous events, outside events that can hopefully change the electoral math in the lead-up to our next election, whenever that might be. And I sincerely believe that for all the hope from a government perspective that the Liberals have that it's a Harris win, from a political spec- uh, perspective, I don't think they would mind if Trump would win because I think they desperately want to try and attempt to try uh, in their ads and in their rhetoric, and they're already doing it, to try yes. to tie Donald Trump and Pierre Polyev. Now, that is a false right. a dichotomy. But liberals okay. will certainly try to do it, just like they pull out the, all the old stops and seeing it on abortion and health care and guns, and you name it. Expect buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. And I think there are okay. people in the Liberal Party apparatus that want that. Yeah. Maple syrup MAGA. Maple syrup MAGA is the, the line that they've been using uh, lately. On the leadership in this country and what they might be hoping for from the outcome of the election in the United States. Kate, a quick comment on that, please. I, I really think that they need a Trump victory in order to provide some contrast. I think that it's foolhardy to Gary's point to think that Canadians are going to reward those Polyev Trump comparisons. They are not likely to land. And, you know, a lot of public opinion data suggests that Polyev would do much better in a Trump presidency. At least that's how Canadians feel. Um, but if you're on the Trudeau Liberal team, there's very few uh, rabbits left to pull out of the hat uh, trying to draw a contrast with Trump uh, and point to the importance of stability is really all that the PMO has left, in my estimation. So I think while a Harris ride would be easier politically, Trump presents them with a greater opportunity for contrast. Okay, we'll be right back. Uh, We'll turn our attention to what happened in Alberta over the weekend. Danielle Smith's big win and... Shots at Ottawa fired. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know on News Radio. Now You Know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. With our Newsday panel featuring Kate Harrison, Vice Chair at Summa Strategies, and Alberta boy Gary Keller, Vice President at Strategy Corps. And uh, what did you think, Gary, of Danielle Smith's big win at the UCP convention, better than 91% support. What would you think of the number? Uh, I was surprised that it was as big as it was because I think people Mm. had been pre-positioning for some time that it might be, you know, in the 70 to 80% range, which I think in a lot of ways is the new normal for for political parties, given how fractious they can be, especially in my, my home province of Alberta. But look, there is no question that Danielle Smith and her team they put in the legwork months leading up to this weekend mm-hmm. where they've been out on the campaign trail. At, uh, and when I say the campaign trail, I mean the internal United Conservative Party campaign trail. She went to 87 different constituency associations over the last six months. She stood on a stage for you know 90 minutes or two hours and she took all sorts of questions, even the inane ones. She sat there and she took them and she answered them. And uh, she did the legwork in advance of this uh, event to make sure that she got a strong mandate and the res- results speak for themselves. And, you know, what she was most afraid of was having this result that Jason Kenney had, where he only got, what, 54 uh, percent in, in his leadership reviews. So you need to do the legwork, get out there, meet with people, take their questions, shake hands, kiss babies to make sure she got the results that she did uh, on the weekend. Okay, what did you think of Danielle Smith's uh, big weekend at the convention, uh, the UCP convention? Yeah, usually when you've got 4,000 plus people turning out for a political convention, that's not a good sign, right? It's not a good sign in a review. It, It would seem as though, you know, there was a rebuke to the leadership. At least it was that way. 
Um, you know, I'm thinking, for example, with John Tory's leadership review in 2007, after lo- or 2008, after losing the 2007 election, he had 66 percent and decided to stay on and then lost in a by-election. So this is much more decisive than that. And I think to Gary's point, he's correct. She she put in the legwork and did the grassroots connection with members. There was no venue too small uh, for her to go to. Um, and it is an, an impressive trait in a political leader to be able to recognize, um, you know, when that is needed and not think you're kind of above dealing with the grassroots membership or designating other people to deal with that. And I think that that is something that sets uh, Danielle Smith apart uh, from other political leaders is that she she understands that and, and puts in uh, a lot of that work herself uh, to make sure that she's accessible to the membership. And that's uh, that's clearly been rewarded with that result. Yeah, I thought uh, stuff was uh, brilliantly timed <laughs> just to coincide with the UCP uh, convention as well, whether it was uh, revealing the exact contents of this Bill of Rights uh, issue in uh, Alberta, the introduction of the legislation around trans slash parental rights issues, and as well uh, launching a a challenge of the carbon tax carve out. All of this, I'm sure, was done, Gary, I would say quite deliberately, with the the backdrop being the the upcoming convention. What do you think? Oh, no question. It's pretty clear that Danielle Smith and her team can sure read a calendar quite well. I mean, oh, yeah. they yeah. they kept the legislature uh on break until uh, October 28th and so so they brought it back just in time. They had this long lead up of all the things they intended to do. In the first week, the legislature was back. She brought in all sorts of legislation, proposed changes uh, to say, and, it, and this was in advance of the event to say, look, I've been listening to you, the grassroots members. I'm, I've delivered on the following things. And in her speech, uh, there was a bear pit session at the event where they have all the ministers on stage. And she said, let me list all the things we did for you. You wanted X, I delivered X. You wanted Y, I delivered Y. You wanted Z, I delivered Z. And uh, I guess the crowd was quite raucous about it all. But again, showing that she was listening very intently to where the party was going. Now, the big challenge yeah. will be that's where the party is going. Where are Albertans going? Uh, and she needs to govern for all Albertans between now yeah. and the next election. But when it comes to the well, one of the big news stories in, in Ottawa today is going to be this emissions cap and the, the ministers involved in that file. They're going to be speaking in about 10 minutes from now to that issue. The emissions cap for the oil and gas sector. I mean, we've talked so long about building a firewall over around Alberta. Uh, Danielle Smith, we have the audio. I mean, she sounded like Alberta's own, you know, like the living embodiment of the firewall. Let's listen to a little bit of this here. And let me be clear, we are not phasing out any of our oil and gas industry. In fact, we're going to unapologetically double our oil and gas production while... (laughs) And we'll lower the emissions the smart way through technology and by sending more of our clean oil and natural gas to Asia and the United States. And Stephen Kimbeau can throw as many temper tantrums and concoct as many green schemes as he wants. We are not going to budge an inch, ever. We are not going to budge an inch, ever. It's like that Taylor Swift song. We are never, ever, ever <laughs> getting back together. Uh, <laughs> uh, any thoughts on that? Just that the way she just, like, uh, an unapologetic defense of the oil and gas sector in Alberta case. Well, they've anticipated this while they're running a multi-million dollar ad campaign in Ottawa called Scrap the Cap. Um, so yeah, they've, they've yeah. known this is coming for some time. Uh, they have treated it as a sword issue, not something to defend against. They think that they can win on this. And I think that certainly that is true provincially. Uh, but for a lot of people outside of Alberta, you know, the, the impact of the oil, oil and gas on the economy is an issue for them, too. This is an issue in Atlantic Canada where you've got a lot of people that come out west to work in the patch. And so I yep, think that yep. she will find herself uh, with many allies with this uh, pretty boneheaded policy, which, in my estimation, is really just a play uh, for Quebec uh, because it is a head scratch okay. for why they would do this. Um, on the eve of the U.S. election, seemingly they would want this news buried. Uh, but to my earlier point, um, uh, Canada producing less oil and gas means that dirty dictators get to produce more. 
so why you would choose to do that um, at the behest of our allies uh, is is completely confounding to me beyond okay. well, domestic politics. We'll be right back. Talk about that new liberal ad that was uh, released recently uh, going after Pierre Polyev. Kind of a strange one to me, but I'll ask our panelists. But when we return, this is the Newsday panel on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. It's the day before the U.S. presidential election. What do you think is going to happen? Alberta Premier Danielle Smith said this weekend, Alberta will double its production of oil and natural gas. Share your thoughts on either of these issues today. 1-833-668-2577. To Mark in Calgary. Hi there, Mark. Hello, Mark. No, Mark. Let's go to Michael in Cape Breton. Michael. How you doing, Rob? I'm good, Michael. Thank you for calling. Go ahead. All right, there's a perfect example, Danielle Smith's statement. She's going to double the output of more carbon into the air. she got to be seeing the three-headed caribous and fish with four heads and natural uh, beauty being totally destroyed by wildfires and, and God knows what else is to come. But, Rob, all I can say there. When ignorance is bliss, it's folly to be wise. The people in Alberta haven't learned by now that the woman's incompetent and she don't care about them running from wildfires. Well, they weep what they saw. On the American election, Rob, uh, I'm hoping for Pamela to win. I hope she wins because if she don't, along with incompetence, the... uh, Mrs. Smith in Alberta, Trump will be up over the border here and give all our politicians, tell them, bend over, and he'll give them a hard boot in the arse, and he'll do what he wants right. with this okay. country. So if right. the people don't smarten up, they deserve everything they get. And why I'm at it, Rob, they better get a handle on no evangelicals going around with a set of angel wings on Trump. A demigod. A demigod. Okay, what kind right. of game are they playing anyway? Of course, they okay. got the people brainwashed. Why? Right. Oh, that's more of a cult. Than they're li- still living in the Old Testament. But anyway, okay. I'll leave you I with got that. You, Michael. But- I got you, Michael. I got you, Michael. No to Trump and no to increased oil production in Alberta. Uh, Richard in Waterloo. Hello, Richard. You're on the air. What's your opinion, Richard? Hey, Rob, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, I'm probably the only person who's going to miss this election campaign because I find the whole thing fascinating. <laughs> but, okay. You know, I, I wonder. You I mean look you're going to miss it when it's I, over? You mean you're going to miss I, it yeah, when I'm it's gonna over? Yeah, I'm going to miss it. I'm oh, gonna really? Miss it. Okay. It's, it's All entertainment. Right. Uh, okay. I just, I just wonder if this is a, seems like a choice between a past that never happened and a future that you may not be able to attain. You know, the hearkening okay. back to, oh, the bucolic days of the 50s and 60s and how everything was perfect. Well, you can't right, go back right. there. Okay. And then there's this fuzzy vision of a future. I don't know what it looks like, but it's. I, I think it's going to be fascinating no matter which way it breaks. If Trump loses, we know he's not taking that well. If, if, if he wins, well, buckle in. It'll be interesting. I think it's incredibly close, too close to call. And right. it'll be probably, I think, the end of the week before to decide. Okay. Are you, I mean, it sounds as though you would prefer Harris carry it over Trump because you, you're kind of saying, well, Trump is offering this vision of America that doesn't really exist anymore. You know, the 1950s America. Or yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Okay. It's, well, it's one thing to offer. It's another thing to achieve it. Right. So okay. I'm not 100% sure you can achieve either one of those visions. That are I out there. Do okay. I have a preference? I have a preference for whoever takes over that's good for this country because we do sleep with that elephant, right? Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. kind yeah. of where I don't really like either one of them. Okay. I think, like some people say, in a country of 400 million, can't you do a bit better? But. Yeah, very common sentiment, I think, uh, especially for Canadians, I think. Uh, well, Richard, you know, I think that's very, we got to yeah, look in the mirror. Yeah. Can we do better? We've got a country of 40 million people. Maybe we can do better too. 
Okay. All right, Kevin. Or uh, right. Richard. Sorry, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. No uh, Wade uh, calling from Sylvan Lake. Hi, Wade. Hey, Rob. Hi. I think Trump's going to win. You think Trump is going to win? And how have you uh, come to that conclusion? Well, I've been watching uh, Avi across America, you know, the Rebel News guy. And okay. uh, he All does right. streeters. And he has been doing streeters. It started in San Francisco. And they talk to people on the street. From what I see, most people are for Trump. But, I mean, that's okay. just, uh, that is what it is. Um, okay. I think he's going to win. I hope he wins. And uh, the other thing about uh, Danielle Smith, uh, she is an absolute warrior and my hero. And I was at the AGM on Thursday night, all day Friday, and all day Saturday till late. And uh, I have never been in a room with that many ecstatic, happy people in my whole entire life. It was amazing, and I can't wait to attend, volunteer for the one next year. Okay, so a lot of lot of positive vibes then. What do you think of this idea? Alberta will double its oil and gas uh, output. What do you think of that? Well, even if it doesn't get doubled, I think as as long as we keep uh, keep on that path, because the um, uh, you know all of the things that come out of oil and gas, all the other products that creates thousands of jobs for for thousands of people and uh we they need to be able to the younger generation needs to be able to afford to live and okay. if okay. we don't well then uh we're how are they gonna how are they gonna live all right very interesting thank you so much okay. wait yep good to hear from you i'm glad you had a good time at that convention sounds like it was quite the show we'll be right back it's talk back uh talking about the u.s presidential election Results coming in tomorrow. Under Danielle Smith, according to Danielle Smith, Alberta would double its production of oil and natural gas. Love your thoughts on that because you have top liberals in Ottawa as we speak announcing an emissions cap for that sector. Would doubling the oil and gas output of Alberta be good for Canada, bad for Canada? Your thoughts. one 2577 Talk back on a Monday on News Radio. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. Gary Keller is with us from Strategy Corps. Kate Harrison from Summa Strategies Newsday panel. Not a lot of time, so let's uh, get right to one of the new liberal ads. Go, go ahead, David. When it comes to strengthening our public health care system, the Liberal team is fighting for you. After they secured vaccines to protect Canadians from COVID-19, they made investments to hire more family doctors and reduce wait lists. Now they're rolling out dental care and they're getting Pharmacare done to deliver free contraceptives and diabetes medications. Pierre Poilievre has made it clear that he would make cuts to all these investments, removing health care services from millions of Canadians. Canadians need progress, not cuts. We won't go back. Won't go back. We won't go back. Fighting for you on health care, Kate. Some quick thoughts, please, in a minute or less. Yeah, I, I, I think if you talk to anybody that interacted with Canada's health care system anywhere in the country, they would say that we need to make a change, not that we need to go back. Uh, when there's a change narrative happening, Rob, uh, it's an odd choice of slogan. I think I would point out, obviously, you don't hear it in the audio no mention of Justin Trudeau, very little focus on him. And when you see the ad, a couple of um, shots of him interacting with others, but it is very de uh those advertisements. So if they wanted okay. to brand Polyev, I think they should have tried doing this about 12 months ago. And I feel like yeah. it's too little too late. Too little too late in a minute or less, Gary. You know, when I heard the phrase fighting for you, I was like, Hmm, where have I heard that before? Oh, wait a second. You know who's been using the phrase fighting for you for about the last 15 years in his personal campaigns here in the riding of Carlton, which I happen to live? Pierre Polyev. You know, they say imitation is the strongest form of flattery, and here it is. They're just ripping his line right off, and then they end the line by saying, we won't go back. Well, where have we heard that again? They're ripping that off from Kamala Harris and the U.S. Democrats. This is unoriginal. They should have been doing this months ago. I don't. I think it's destined to fail. And Kate is right. If you think we've done a great job on the healthcare system, is is leading? Well, you're kind of leading with your chin, in my opinion. 
All right. Great to hear from both of you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy that big show tomorrow. The United States election. Bye-bye. Yeah. You stay, panel. Talk back right after the news at the top of the hour. I want to talk about the U.S. election again today. Maybe some Alberta politics as well. Another scrap with Ottawa. Let's get to it. Talk back right after the news on News Radio. It's time to talk back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now. And have your say. 1 833 668 2577. Welcome to Talk Back. Two hours of debate and discussion on the big issues of the day. And look, there's no bigger issue, no bigger news story in the world than tomorrow's U.S. presidential election. So we'd like your thoughts again today because, it, let's face it, it's getting down to crunch time here. I don't know what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? I don't know who's going to win. Who do you think is going to win? Let me ask you. Are you worried at all about the outcome of the U.S. election? And if so, what has you worried? What are you concerned about with this U.S. election? How could it impact Canada? What could this election mean for Canada? I mean, those are just some of the questions that we have just to kind of get the conversation going today. 1-833-668-2577. one 2577 I mean, there there are some other issues that we can talk about today, but my goodness, this week, this has to be the big one. It's it's kind of like everything is in this, this holding pattern now. So many people are waiting to see what's going to happen tomorrow. And who knows if everything is even going to be settled by tomorrow night? Who knows? I don't know. Dude. What do you think? Maybe it, Maybe it drags on. Maybe it drags on for days or weeks or months. I don't know. What do you think? I am going to be part of a special broadcast tomorrow that you'll hear on all of the news radio radio stations. So I I know a lot of you are going to be glued to the cable news network. So you get home from work and sit down, start to watch the the results come in. But if you are out and about tomorrow uh, on the road, if you're at work, give us a listen and uh, we'll keep you right up to date. You won't miss anything. The U.S. presidential election. The U.S. presidential election. We are going to begin seeing results tomorrow night. And maybe it'll be a late night. Or maybe it'll be an early morning. Or maybe it will be just the start of a long week. What do you think is going to happen? I'd love your thoughts on it. 1-833-668-2577. 1-833-668-2577. If you don't want to talk about the U.S. election, there there are... Other things in the mix that we can talk about, such as, gosh, I find this really interesting, this battle that's happening between the Liberals in Ottawa and uh, the Alberta government, led by Alberta Premier Danielle Smith, who won a huge endorsement from members of her party over the weekend, 91% in a leadership review. So she has the overwhelming support of of the members of her party. And, I mean, she's governing that province with with a majority government these days. And she has lots of issues and is picking lots of fights with the Liberals in Ottawa. And another one of those disputes is coming to the forefront today. And it's all about an oil and gas emissions cap. Now, I know I mentioned this last week, but I think it's very, it's a very important issue It is worthy of some attention. The Liberal government in Ottawa is going to impose a cap on emissions in the oil and gas sector. And Stephen Gibo and Jonathan Wilkinson, Gibo the Environment Minister, Wilkinson the Natural Resources Minister, I mean, two of Trudeau's front bench cabinet ministers are going to outline to news reporters this emissions cap here in Ottawa today. It's happening right now, as a matter of fact. Now, in Alberta, the government there under Premier Smith is running this advertising campaign. It's warning of all kinds of bad things that are going to happen if this emissions gap comes into effect, saying it's going to raise prices for you. It's going to be bad for the economy, not just the Alberta economy. The argument is what's bad for Alberta is bad for the rest of Canada. They say it's going to cost jobs. It's going to lead to a big slowdown in economic growth. Oh, and did I mention you'll pay more for groceries? 
according to the government of Alberta. And Premier Smith in Alberta, during her speech at that convention over the weekend, and David has the audio, said Alberta's not going to be told what to do with its natural resources, with, with its oil and gas. It's not going to be told what to do by liberals and new Democrats in Ottawa. And said the province is not going to phase out its oil and gas industry. In fact, it's going to double the output of oil and gas from Alberta. David, play, play the tape if you can, please. And let me be clear, we are not phasing out any of our oil and gas industry. In fact, we're going to unapologetically double our oil and gas production while... And we'll lower the emissions the smart way through technology and by sending more of our clean oil and natural gas to Asia and the United States. And Stephen Kimbeau can throw as many temper tantrums and concoct as many green schemes as he wants. We are not going to budge an inch, ever. Well, not going to budge an inch, ever, Mr. Giebel. But I found that interesting. Double the output of oil and gas from Alberta, Premier Smith of Alberta says. What do you think of that idea, listeners? I'd really love to hear from people on that idea. What do you think of that? Don't have to be in Alberta to comment on that. Of course, we want to hear from our, our, our Alberta listeners, but gosh, I'd, you know, I'd love to hear from our listeners in Atlanta, Canada, our listeners in Ontario. What, what would you think if Alberta doubled its output of oil and natural gas? Doubled oil production, doubled natural gas production. What, what do you think? Would that be good for the country? Good for the economy, good for jobs, good for energy security? Or would that be a bad idea? Because of an increase in greenhouse gas emissions, because of the climate crisis. I'd love to get your take on that. I find that topic really, really interesting. You have liberals in Ottawa today announcing an emissions cap on the oil and gas sector. And at the same time, the Premier of Alberta is saying, I don't think so. In fact, I think we're going to double our output of oil and natural gas. Who do you think has the better policy for Canada? 1-833-668-2577, 1-833-668-2577, the U.S. presidential election. Results will finally come in tomorrow. We want your thoughts today here in the home stretch here on Election Eve about how you think it's going to all turn out and the latest in the war of words between the Trudeau Liberals in Ottawa and the Premier of Alberta. What would you think if Alberta doubled its oil production or doubled the production of its natural gas? Good for Canada, bad for Canada. Phone lines open now. If you've never called before, just mention that to David and we'll make your call a priority. At 1-833-668-2577, it's Talkback for another week on News Radio. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow well today before the u.s presidential election what do you think is uh, going to happen and what do you think about the idea of alberta doubling its output of oil and natural gas that was something that uh, premier smith danielle smith mentioned on the weekend at uh, the ucp convention kevin in calgary hi kevin Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm good, Kevin. Our, 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 our fellow Atlantic uh, fellow that called in there a couple of callers back, it's, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in that statement, but that's how he feels. But um, some of the folks out there don't seem to uh, appreciate our oil and gas, yet they uh, certainly welcome our equalization payments, saying a lot of their resources for petroleum come from the Middle East. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. But as for Daniel Smith, um, this whole kinder pipeline that uh, Mr. Trudeau made the entire population of Canada pay for, why can't we use it? Okay, what, what do you mean, why can't we use it? Well, we're going to double our production. Right, um, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. So, it, yeah, but isn't it, isn't it in use right now, that pipeline? It is. But yeah, yeah. Let's, let's double our production because we just paid for that pipeline. And uh, let's put it to good use. Yeah, big bucks too. Big bucks. <laughs> exactly. So right. let's put it yeah. to good use. Let's 
Let's yeah, start pumping yeah. that out to the rest of the world, and let's try and figure out how we can change somebody's mind on restricting our natural resources from going to places like Germany and Japan, which has happened in the past. Okay. What about, I think the caller would say, um, Michael in Cape Breton, he, he would say, well, what about climate change? Well, we've got a yeah. lot of new technologies coming out all the time. And okay. I, I used to work in the oil and gas industry, and I've seen the, 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 the improvements and the new technology. And it's, we're not going to stop trying to improve technology, but we also can't stop providing the world with energy. Okay. All right. All right, Kevin, thank you for your call. I really appreciate your call today. In uh, High River, Alberta, Russ. Hi, Russ. Hey, how are, you, how are you today? I'm good, Russ. Thanks for calling. Hey, I was just watching CBC and watching our esteemed Eastern leaders uh, putting their stuff on the oil and gas industry. And at the end, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to get mad. And then I get on and, and our resource minister gets on and badmouth Polyev, like, are you making a statement about oil and gas and pollutions, or are you making a political statement? Because it's it turned into a, a, night, a political bashing of Polya. But anyway, that's just the liberals. Okay. Well, it is politics, and it is Ottawa, yeah. sir. So. Yeah, it is. And they so are that's liberals, right. so, yeah. You know what? You know what? Um, as for the election, I personally think, and so far I've been pretty lucky in all my bets. I made a bet this morning with a friend of mine that Trump's going to win by a landslide, and it's going to be over Trump by 11 o'clock. Trump and a landslide. Well, you think so? I'll tell you why, because they have, okay. they're hurting as bad as we are. Okay. And it's, at the end of the day, what did Ronald Reagan, was it Reagan that said, it's the economy, stupid? No, it was Carville, but yeah, I, okay, uh, I appreciate right. the message, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what it's about. And as for cutting oil and gas emissions by 35%, you know what? I don't like it, but you know it, it might happen. But oil and gas industry is is resilient. It'll we'll okay. he'll figure Gotta it go. out. Gotta go. Gotta go. He'll figure it out. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's talk back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. Yes, it is. And it's the day before the U.S. presidential election. So share your thoughts on what you think is going to happen. Any worries or concerns you might have about the outcome of that election? We'd love to hear it. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith said this weekend that under her government, Alberta would double its production of oil and natural gas. This, as top liberals in Ottawa cabinet ministers announce an emissions gap for the oil and gas sector. What do you think about Alberta doubling its oil and gas output? Do you think that'd be good for Canada? Would it be bad for Canada? Scrap the cap is the campaign that's been launched by the Alberta government. It includes all kinds of advertising, $4 million campaign paid for by Alberta taxpayers. Mr. Gibo, the environment minister, was just asked about that in an event in Ottawa just moments ago. Here's what he had to say. You know, it's more, it's more hot air. And, and disinformation on the part of the conservative movement in Canada, whether it's Pierre Poilievre, whether it's Daniel Smith, whether it's Scott Moe, uh, pretending that climate change isn't happening in the face of mounting climate impacts and, and dramatic impacts on, on the lives of Canadians, but also cost to the Canadian economy. Uh, they will continue doing stupid things and we will continue focusing on helping Canadians to create a robust economy, good jobs, and work to protect the environment. Okay. Pierre Pauly is doing stupid things. Danielle Smith is doing stupid things. And what about the climate crisis? That would uh, seem to be the response from uh, Mr. Gibo in Ottawa today. Let's go to Sean in uh, Cambridge, Ontario. Hi, Sean. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, these Hi, gentlemen Sean. are clearly not very well educated in the industrial area. I mean, they talk about, you know, as if, petrochemicals are only used in cars. I mean, they're also used in lubricants, CDs, plastics, clothing, paint, cosmetics, all sorts of stuff. It's not just burnt in cars. These people really need to get an education. Like, is that the only thing they're aware of? I mean, like, how, like are they even qualified to be an industrial minister? It boggles the mind that somebody in our federal government Response from making policy is that uneducated in the use 
of petroleum. And I'm all for Alberta increasing the production of oil and gas, quite frankly. You are? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gibo would say, what about the climate crisis, sir? It's you a very energy-intensive like business. Other, produces a lot of greenhouse uses. gases. There's other uses for it, like I said. Yes. Plastics. Uh, yes. You know, you know, there's plastics. There's, you know, fertilizers, perfumes, asphalt, lubricants. It's not just going up. Not to mention we're getting more and more efficient every year in burning stuff. And, and what's his magic bullet? If, if we switch to electrical cars, are we magically going to have 15 more nuclear power plants in Ontario to power this stuff? And not to mention, a lot of these petroleum devices, a lot of petroleum is going to be used to, to make the components for the electric cars. So what's his grand plan? It, and these okay, people, all right. You know, they're big on plans, but very thin on details. Okay. Thank you for your call, Sean. I appreciate you waiting there. In Cambridge, a couple of lines available. It's been busy so far. one 2577 Two topics there for you. one 2577 uh, To Beth in Greenfield, Nova Scotia. Hi, Beth. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, Beth. Thanks for calling. Yeah, so um, just to, I'll try to be brief. Uh, first of all, um, I think it's incredibly irresponsible of um, Danielle in Alberta to threaten to double the production of fossil fuels. Um, I'm wondering at what point do people think there is going to be a generation that that accepts the fact that we are going to have to take measures. It's, it's not just the economy we're looking at, and if we can't breathe, we're not going to have an economy in the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, okay. Second of all, I'd like to say that I think Kamala Harris is going in in a landslide Trump is okay. history, and okay. um, right. anybody who needs to study this, uh, just look at some of the debate materials available to us every day, listen to both of them debate, and there's absolutely no competition. Then why is it so close? Sorry, did you say something? Yes, I asked you, why Why do you think it's so close, then, if that's the case? Uh, why do I think it's so close? Uh, well, yeah. in the last... Probably five days. It has. It has been not very close. Uh, it's been evident that Kamala Harris is is taking the lead in a couple of the swing states, and um, you know it's shocking to all the an- and analysts because this is certainly not necessarily what they expected. So, where people in general, I think everywhere in the world, have thought that it's a tight election, I don't really think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a really extreme win for uh, Kamala Harris. So you think an early night tomorrow night, then? Yeah, geez, I don't know. I'm telling you. I wish I I wasn't as interested in it as I am, but, you know, you can't can't help but be concerned when uh, someone like Trump has already been in power and was so incredibly incompetent. And, uh, you know, telling people to drink during COVID, telling them to drink uh, poisonous materials. <laughs> I mean, the guy is just, never mind all the uh, conflicts of interest that his kids right. got into. Okay. So, right, right. Okay. anyway, that's right. what I think, for what it's worth. Thank you. Okay. We'll see what happens once those results start rolling in tomorrow. I'm curious, just like everybody else. Let's go to Grant in Kitchener. Hi, Grant. Yeah, good day. Did he not, Hi, Grant. when he was in power, did he not cause a lot of trouble with the uh, free trade stuff or or something like that? I, well, I'm not the, sure. the free trade agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States, that was renegotiated during the Trump years, and it's going uh-huh. to have to be renegotiated again in 2026. No matter who uh-huh. wins tomorrow, it will be renegotiated. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I just don't like the idea that, that he was in power when we had COVID and he basically didn't he, he didn't think it was anything serious. And I think if he doesn't... Well, I don't know about that. He poured all kinds of money into those vaccines and doing vaccine production. Yeah, but he never really... Right. When he took a tour through some some facility, he, he never masked up. And, okay, okay. Yeah. And you didn't think I, he took it as seriously as he should have. Correct. As the president. Okay, fair yeah. enough. And okay. I okay. Think 
And I think if he doesn't get in, he's going to complain that the votes need to be recounted again. Right, right, right. And that he'll and say I it was a, rigged, right? Right, and I have a feeling right. that his followers will create a lot of havoc too. It, 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 it would be kind of no, not not kind of nice. It would be nice to have a woman, colored woman, and because that. Maybe that'll change things. I, well, maybe I, it would be history making. It would be history making. You're right there. You know, a, a, a woman is president of the United States for the first time. A mixed race, I think, is how she would describe herself, Grant. Mixed race. But thank you for calling and sharing your opinion today on the Talk Back as we talk about U.S. politics the day before the big day, the U.S. presidential election. And it's Alberta versus Ottawa over oil and gas again. Let's talk about that today, too. one 2577 More of your calls just ahead. On Talk Back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. one 2577 It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Share your thoughts on what you think is going to happen with the U.S. presidential election. And Alberta Premier Danielle Smith this weekend said her province is going to unapologetically double its production of oil and natural gas. The Liberals in Ottawa just the very next day announcing an emissions cap for that sector. What do you think about this idea? Alberta doubles its energy output. Good or bad for Canada? one 2577 Colin in uh, southern Alberta. Thanks for calling, Colin. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'd You're like welcome. to say that Sean earlier made a lot of valid points about the uses of uh, oil and gas. And I believe that oil and gas are the blood and air that make the world go round. And an increase in productivity for this province would be sensational. Uh, as far as uh, climate change and the effects of that go, I think that is something the government has pulled the wool over people's eyes. Uh, okay. I was taught as a child growing up that plants change carbon dioxide into oxygen. And so uh, carbon dioxide is an important product as far as nature goes. And to say that carbon capture is a good thing, that's a bad thing. It's... it's uh, something they're not teaching kids in school anymore and i believe it's mostly propaganda it's sort of okay alternative energy people can line their pockets okay that, you know that's how you view it uh, others view it as you know we're in an existential climate crisis well and we're, we're already dealing with the cost of, 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 of climate change look at the you know look at I'm just saying, sir. Look at the wildfires. Well, you know, Fort McMurray, terrible wildfire. Jasper, terrible wildfire. Things like that. Okay, well, they should be putting the carbon tax into more firefighting equipment and training okay. people to deal with these okay. fires. Okay. Uh, right. I don't see uh, uh, a lot of help going to the firefighting uh, end of things. Okay, uh, very interesting. Uh, you okay. Know, they right. want to stop the fires? And that causes more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than all the vehicles in the world combined. Just a few fires or a volcano. It's Mother Nature. And okay, okay. All right. To um, nature. So if, if, if Alberta doubled its output of oil and natural gas, you'd say go for it. Absolutely. Go for it. Be, go for it. Okay. Be, uh, All right. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. I got you. I got you, Colin. Let's go to uh, Dick is also calling from Calgary. Thank you, uh, Dick. Go ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, first of all, on the American U.S. election, I really think that uh, Kamala is going to get in. You do. But, okay. Um, I I think it's going to be close. I mean, I don't think it's going to be landslide for anything. If Camel gets in, I think there's going to be riots. And if you look at the U.S., they're talking about boarding up the windows already. And so maybe this isn't the same as I am. On the, um, with Alberta doubling the output in 
in uh, oil and gas. Yeah, oil and gas. I I'm all for it. Like, oh, you are okay. I am. I believe that that Alberta and the the uh, oil companies are are doing as much as they can to reduce the emissions. They've got they've got uh, tanks way down deep in the earth. They're they're putting the emissions to, you know, in, in these tanks. I don't know much about it, but carbon capture, I believe, right? You're yeah, talking about carbon actually, capture. Yep, carbon okay. capture. I think that's it. I so I think the I think the uh, oil companies are doing what they can. I I believe that there's I believe that there's a good thing to do to do with um, doubling the oil oil production. The rest of Canada doesn't complain. When they get the the uh, money from Alberta, the, especially Quebec, Quebec gets more gets more than anybody else. But nobody else is complaining about the about the money that they're getting out of my taxes. Like that. Okay. When when I was in school, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was really a bad thing because I believe that Canada is made up of ten provinces and two territories. We we should share. All right, all right. Thank you. That's for that's your my call. Opinion. Well, I appreciate you sharing it with us and giving us a call today, Dick. I really do. Thank you. And more of your calls are just ahead at one eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's Talkback on News Radio. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow we're talking about the u.s presidential election the big finale is tomorrow and alberta premier danielle smith versus the liberals in ottawa with the premier of alberta saying we are going to double our output of oil and natural gas. We're not phasing this industry. We're going to double our output of it. Uh, let's go to Chris in Nova Scotia. Hi, Chris. Hey, how are you doing, Rob? I'm good, Chris. Thanks for calling. Oh, lovely day down here. It's sunny and bright and just a beautiful fall day. If you've never been around Nova Scotia, I suggest you do it. Yeah, uh, sounds lovely. I, it was freezing rain here today where I am, so I, I'd take that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer, man. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Listen, Clocks uh, go back and freezing rain. It's like, oh, what are you doing to me here? Okay. Freezing All right. rain? What do you want to... rain? Yeah. Yeah. Freezing rain. Uh, we had freezing rain. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what, yeah, let's get to it. it here. Well, uh, well, let's just talk about the, uh, the, the politics of it all. Okay. Like, I only envision the politics as... Uh, here in Canada, we have our conservatives and liberals. And in the U.S., they have their conservatives and liberals. And I find it such a, well, they're so close. I mean, they're the exact same. So if you don't like your Trudeau policies up here, you probably won't like your Camilla uh, yeah. Uh, yeah policies down there because yeah, the liberals here and the liberals there are almost the same the same as Polyev and Trump I mean they're, they're both they're almost they're almost identical you I know? don't know I, I don't know how they, much Polyev is much like Trump uh, they're the same in a couple of ways I mean Polyev and Trump they both don't like the news media I mean you know yeah, that's for yeah. Sure. Well, no, no, no. Right. That's out. Come on. Yeah. Let's not go on crap details. Let's face it. The uh, media has 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 lost the plot. I think. 
I okay. think the uh, uh-huh. Joe Rogan uh, interviews recently where Trump and both Vance went on, and I thought they were interesting as hell. I mean, okay. they were a very good interview, and they both lasted over three hours, let's face it. I mean, crazy. I yeah. really don't think Kamala could go on, Joe, and uh, do a three-hour plot. And I and certainly, Gabe, who's that? Yeah, I mean, I, I've interviewed a lot of people. I don't even know if I could interview somebody for three hours. Like, sit there and just have it with somebody for three hours. Three hours. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's as long as this show interviewing just one person. That's crazy. I got about a little more than an hour into the Trump Joe Rogan thing in the night. I had to kind of turn it off. There was a football game on. All right. That's hour number one in the books. Look, we're going to reset everything, pick things up right after the news. If you want to grab a line, by all means. Alberta politics, U.S. politics in the mix today for us on TalkBack. It's time to talk back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now and have your say. 1-833-668-2577. A couple of topics for you here in the final hour of Talk Back today on a Monday. There's the U.S. presidential election with results coming in tomorrow evening. Maybe it's a late night. Maybe it's an early morning. Maybe it's the start of a long week. What do you think is going to happen? With the U.S. presidential election, one 2577 one 2577 And then in this country, we have the latest battle between liberals in Ottawa and Alberta Premier Danielle Smith and the Alberta government. Now, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith won a big endorsement from members at her party's convention over the weekend. She scored a 91% win in a leadership review. So she clearly has the overwhelming support of members in the party, governs with a a majority government, of course, in the Alberta legislature. And she's picking a lot of fights with liberals in, in Ottawa, and they're more than happy to fight back. And one of the disputes is coming to the forefront today. It's the oil and gas emissions gap. Okay. This is what Premier Smith said about the oil and gas industry in Alberta during the UCP convention this weekend. Let's listen here. And let me be clear, we are not phasing out any of our oil and gas industry. In fact, we're going to unapologetically double our oil and gas production while... And we'll lower the emissions the smart way through technology and by sending more of our clean oil and natural gas to Asia and the United States. And Stephen Kimbeau can throw as many temper tantrums and concoct as many green schemes as he wants. We are not going to budge an inch, ever. We're not going to budge an inch, ever, when it comes to Alberta's energy industry. Uh, You heard her say, we're not phasing out the oil and gas industry. We're going to double the output of oil and gas in Alberta, double the output of oil and gas from Alberta. Now, the government there is running a nationwide advertising campaign right now, warning about this emissions cap, saying it's going to raise prices for you. It's going to be bad for the economy. People are going to lose their jobs. It'll lead to a big slowdown in economic growth. All of these things. Multi-million dollar ad campaign. So Mr. Gibo, the environment minister, Steve Gibo and the Trudeau government, was asked about that at an event in Ottawa today. And this is what Stephen Gibo had to say about that. You know, it's more it's more hot air and and disinformation on the part of the conservative movement in Canada, whether it's Pierre Poilievre, whether it's Daniel Smith, whether it's Scott Moe, uh, pretending that climate change isn't happening in the face of mounting climate impacts and and dramatic impacts on, on the lives of Canadians, but also cost to the Canadian economy, uh, they will continue doing stupid things and we will continue focusing on helping Canadians to create a robust economy, good jobs, and work to protect the environment. Hot air and stupid <laughs> is Mr. Gibo's assessment of what he's hearing, not only from, from, from Danielle Smith, but also from conservative leaders like Paul Yev 
uh, like Scott Moe, who j- just won a fifth consec- for the Saskatchewan party, a fifth consecutive term in, in the Saskatchewan provincial election. So uh, let's get uh, right back to the phones. Uh, who do we have up next here, David? Do we have Paul in Cambridge? Is Paul there? No, Johnny is no, next. No, Paul. Johnny's up in Calgary. Okay, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, I'm. Yeah, everything's fine, Johnny. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having good. me on. I love your show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, question for you. I think Trump actually is going to win, but I don't think he'll okay. end up taking office. Um, oh, really? Something's going to happen. Something either is going to happen to him or something's going to come up. Uh, they've already tried to take him out twice. My okay. personal opinion, but um, as for Danielle Smith, I think she's doing an amazing job, and I think it's a good thing that she wants to double all the oil productions. We make okay. Alberta is made out of oil. We this is where we all make our money. The rest of Canada benefits from that. So for them right. to sit there and be sitting there saying no, 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 we need to stop it. The rest of Canada will suffer way worse without us doubling it. Okay, so you don't think Trump is going to win because you think something terrible is going to happen to him? Oh, of course. There's no way he'll end and... up actually taking office. I think he'll win the election, but I don't think he'll right. actually step foot in the election. And uh, they can't have him okay. in there. All right, that's a pretty bold. Uh, that's a pretty bold prediction. Now you hear Mr. Gibo. He says, "Well, you have to those." Stupid people like Danielle Smith. What about climate change? What, what, what do you say to that? Well, considering there's new technology, and I'm hoping they do fix a little bit of the climate change, but they got to also remember Canada's only 0.01 percent of the world's emissions. How about we start uh, well, going one and after percent. all the one and a half? Percent. Sorry, yeah, one and a half percent. One and a half percent. Why don't yes. we go after somebody that's over 30 percent? Why, why, why don't we go after all the other countries in the world to stop the climate change when we are the absolute one of the smallest okay. emissions uh, in the world? We're not the problem. Canada's not the problem when it comes to no. climate change. You, you focus on China, focus on the United States, focus on India, the really big emitters. Yeah, okay. Fair points, Johnny. Thank you for your call. Appreciate that. Although a pretty dark prediction from Johnny, Trump's going to win and they're going to take him out. He's, he, something bad's going to happen to him. He's not going to be able to take office. Jackie in uh, Calgary. Hi, Jackie. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, Jackie. How are you? I'm good. Um, thanks good. for taking my call. I was You're just welcome. actually phoning in um, in regards to a statement that a gentleman had made earlier in regards to forest fires. I actually have to follow that up because our governments are sometimes at the forefront of some of the issues that we're facing. And one of the things that I know is that the government of Alberta stopped uh, what they would call calling a forest. Back in the late 60s or 70s, we would go through and clean up the dead wood, the dead uh, wood from beetles, so on and so forth. And we don't do that anymore. So we've let this stockpile within our natural parks, everywhere else. And one of the things that creates these forest fires is not the forest fires, fires is the government. It, it, they're at the forefront of it. They stopped spending money to clear, and now we pay for it down the road. So you think it's a forest management issue, not a climate change issue? Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, when it comes to wildfires? Climate, yeah, I think they, they both play a part. But okay. if we were okay. proactive and uh, do our job and you know reduce, reuse, recycle... All of these things will account towards controlling carbon. And I, I'm not a disbeliever of that climate change isn't happening. It is happening. But we also okay. have to be proactive. And what do you I think do about the idea of Alberta doubling its oil and gas production? I don't think Danielle Smith can determine if we can double it or not. That's going to be on the producers in the country, okay. uh, in Alberta specifically. I mean, it'd be nice. I work in the oil and gas. But I also recognize that she won't control that. That will be a bigger It'll be picture industry. than Danielle Correct. It'll be an industry decision. Okay. Yeah. Based on costs and whatnot. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you for your call, Jackie. Good to hear from you. Uh, we will stop here. Be right back. couple of lines available there. It's been busy all day. Phones ringing off the hook on the U.S. election, on the constant battles between 
Alberta and the Liberal government in Ottawa. 1 668 2577. Be right back on Talk Back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Talking about the U.S. presidential election campaign with tomorrow being election day in the United States and Premier Danielle Smith says her government will double oil and gas output. Your thoughts on that? Paul in Cambridge. Thanks for calling, Paul. Hi there. Yes. Hi there. Um, Yeah, I want to talk about the U.S. election. Um, I think it's still too close to call the way it is right now. But in all honesty, it shouldn't even be this close. I I mean, you, you had a, you know, has been president. After January 6th, you know, we thought he was done, that he'd be toast, right? I mean, your political career is over. But, you know, the Biden admin has been so bad. And, you know, you got Biden bumbling his way for the past three and a half years. You've got Kamala, who was in hiding most of those years. We didn't hear much from her. And then all of a sudden you're thrust in the spotlight. You know, I, I don't think that this election should be close any, at all. But it looks like the, the Democrats have basically resurrected him. Um, you know, and you can't disagree. You know, how did you how did he even get half the population, you know, voting for him or supporting him? Right. It just goes to show you it's just been that bad. This election was was theirs or it was theirs to lose. I should have been theirs. Yeah. But but they did. But the Democrats did such a a lousy job that they they allowed Trump to make this incredible comeback. Is that how you see it? Well, I mean, that's how I see it. I mean, how else could yeah. it? I mean, after January sure. 60th, okay. post- what happened, you know? Um, well, that's what I know. thought. So anyway, yeah. but but the other thing I wanted to talk about was Daniel Smith. Yes. And, and you know, the whole carbon emissions thing. is one thing that I think everyone needs to be concerned about or should understand, that Canada produces less than 3% of all global emissions. And I think between Canada and the U.S., it's something like 13% of all global emissions. So we're fooling ourselves if we think that we can go all green over here, you know, while the rest of the world does not. It's just not going to help our case. And you know, you can argue climate change back and forth if you want. There is or there isn't. But I think one thing you can't argue about or can't deny is that we continually are polluting the environment further and further, no matter what. Right. We're going in. We're cutting up forests. We're taking over lakes, uh, you know, uh, closing swamplands, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, so and that's all because of population growth. If you were to, to say that, you know, the entire world is going to go green, you know, by the year 2050, we're going to have 9 billion people. That's another China on the planet. And everyone needs to wow. consume. They need to consume food. They need homes. They need housing space. And they all produce garbage. So at some point in time, you know, the only solution, I think, to the global problem that we're having is essentially at some point in time, we have to look at reducing or curbing the worldwide population at some point. Because okay. you know, even right. today, Canada could do all it can, and we're going to curb only 3% of global emissions. Thank okay. you. Yeah, it's closer to one and a half percent. Again, I come back to that. That's the government's own figure, by the way. That's not my number. Okay, John in Calgary. John, hi there. Thanks for waiting. Go ahead, John. Hello. Hello, John. Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you just Hello. fine, John. What's your opinion, John? All right. Daniel Smith, leave her alone. She's doing a wonderful job. Okay. As far as, as far as our climate control goes, there's no actual climate control. There's no actual anything happening in the climate. It's just Mother Nature doing what she's been doing for all the years. But see, right. the, government okay. don't, the, the government doesn't want to teach our children anything about anything. They want them to come out of the back end of summer day Okay, you're, you're, you're breaking up there, John. You're breaking up. You're going to have to get a better phone and you can call us back. Uh, I'm going to stop here and then we'll take a couple of more calls before the before the bottom of the hour. Because if I, uh, Randy, if I bring you on right now, you'd only have about 15 seconds. I want to give you more time than that. Uh, whatever your opinion happens to be on either the U.S. presidential election or Premier Smith's latest battle with Stephen Gibo in Ottawa and the future of the oil and gas sector in this country. one 866 2577 Comment on both if you want. Because it's Talkback. That's what we do here on News Radio. Have 
something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Today before the U.S. presidential election, feel free to share your thoughts on what do you think is going to happen. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith says she wants the province to double its production of oil and natural gas. Meantime, the Liberals in Ottawa are announcing an emissions cap for that sector, saying it's important to fight climate change. If you want your thoughts, uh, we want your thoughts on that topic as well. Randy is uh, calling. Hi, Randy. You're on the air. Randy, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? I hear you just fine, Randy. Yeah. Great. I just wanted to say I do believe we have a carbon problem, and I believe that we should do everything we can to stop it. But one of the best things to do is sell our natural gas to countries that burn nothing but coal. Mm. And okay. And uh, I think Eastern Canada, the federal government's trying to weaken Alberta because they don't want us. They don't want to recognize Alberta. We don't vote for them, and they don't want to support us. So you think they're uh, picking on Alberta, basically? I don't have a problem with selling more natural gas and more oil, but we got to do it responsibly and try and cut emit, cut fuel uh, emissions. All right, Randy. Fair enough. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Uh, we have time for another one here. Let's go to uh, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. You're on the air. Rebecca, go ahead. Hi, thanks for having me on. I You're welcome. Just thinking a little bit about the U.S. election and yes. just wondering, like, I have no idea what is going to happen, really. When I scroll around and I try and do research and see where the polls are at, there are so mm-hmm. many different polls that say such wildly different things. And yeah. then you've got the betting odds and all of these things. I don't know how anyone feels confident in any prediction or where to even find any information to trust that would give us an indication of which direction this is going to go. Yeah. I have no idea what's going to happen. What's interesting is that when I talk to Canadians, they feel okay. very, very confident in their uh, sense of who's going to win. They're positive that one or the other is going to win. And Americans are more on the fence. I have a lot of conversations. I work in the U.S. somewhere different every week. And I wonder okay. if it has to do with the fact that we don't share news on our social media platforms in Canada and people are trapped basically within their own echo chambers or their own platform of choice that tells them, reinforces their view of the world, as opposed to having any exposure to any alternative. Oh, the the, the blocking of news, for example, on Facebook, for example? Exactly. Something like yeah, that? Yeah, the fact oh, really? that okay. there's no chance of encountering any opposing news stories other than what you are choosing to believe or you're only going to Fox or you're only going to CNN because that's your source of news. There's no chance you're going to be exposed to the other side. So I just find it interesting that Canadians are so much more confident in what they think is going to happen in the U.S. election than most of the U.S. people I've talked to. Right. And are you like me, like you have no idea I what's going to no happen? I have no idea. And no. I keep okay. looking for reliable information I can trust and i go to but again based on what happened in 2016 in the american election when we were all so sure it was going to go one way and it went the other way and we were basing that opinion on polls i honestly don't even trust polls anymore and it seems like there's so many out there and the ones that fox are reporting are so wildly different than the ones cnn for example are reporting and i just don't know if we even can trust even what we're seeing in the polls right now i don't know how anybody has any sort of a concrete idea what's going to happen Okay. All right. Very interesting, especially the thing about the blocking of news on yeah, social media I think it's platforms. Making a difference, it's, uh, and I think during our next federal election, we'll see more of that as well. People, you know, really only seeing what the algorithm feeds them, well, which only and, serves to exactly. reinforce their own worldview, right? And if you want news, you're going to yeah. one dedicated place that is already giving you what you want to hear. So the likelihood of you being exposed to any alternative worldviews goes down substantially. Okay. That's really interesting point of view. Thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate Thank you. that. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, you too. So more of your calls coming up right after the news here on Talk Talkback. We've managed to clear the lines. It's been very busy uh, all week, but we have one, two, three, four lines available right now. So if you've called, never been able to get through before, today could be your lucky day. And tomorrow is the big day.
U.S. presidential election day. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? How do you think all this is going to turn out? And why do you believe that? And, you, and Canadian politics, it's once again Alberta versus Ottawa. The Smith government, the conservative government in Alberta, the liberals in Ottawa, at it again, this time over oil and gas. We can jump right back into that topic too. 1-833-668-2577. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Two topics today. The U.S. presidential election, election day tomorrow. What do you think is going to happen And Alberta Premier Danielle Smith versus Ottawa again, with Premier Smith over the weekend saying Alberta would double its production of oil and gas, and Liberals today in Ottawa announced an emissions cap for the oil and gas sector, saying Alberta's oil and gas producers would have to cut emissions by a third over the next eight years. What do you think about the idea of Alberta doubling its is oil and gas output, would that be good for Canada or because of climate change, you know, bad for Canada? one 2577 1-833-668-2577. To Jay in Kitchener. Thanks for calling, Jay. You're on the air. I know we don't want to think about this, but uh, let's say the election ends in a tie. What happens then in the States? I don't know. Is that even possible? I is it possible? Know. I don't know. I've never, I've never considered. I'm not an expert in the electoral college, unfortunately, Jay. So I can't even tell you if that is a possibility. I, has anybody even thought of like, worst case scenario? What would happen with that? Because that that uh, shouldn't happen. But and I also want to give you thank you for giving us the freedom in, in this country to express our opinions uh, on your toll free line. I'm blind and in a wheelchair, and we've talked before. I really oh yes, Jay. Talk yes, 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 Jay. I really appreciate your your call again. Is there a candidate in that election that you favor over the other, for example? Do you like Harris or Trump? Uh, are you I leaning hope one way or the other? I favor and not reelect him. Not reelect him. Okay. And why I do you say to that? Be judgmental, but you know. No, that's fine. That, that's fine. Uh, do you think he's dangerous, or do you just think he's a bad guy? Do you think he's a crook, uh, all of the above? <laughs> I, I, I'm in a wheelchair and blind. He has disabilities that people can't identify. Okay. All right. All right. I don't know what you mean by that, Jay, but uh, I, uh, I thank you for your call. Yeah, I thank, thank you for your call and sharing your thoughts. Appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, tomorrow's... Oh, David, you can't have a tie? You can? You look that up? Yeah, I just looked that up because I didn't know either. And you can have a tie in the Electoral College in the U.S. Uh, This is from an NBC News explainer. Um, Okay. So the scenario would be called, it's what's called a contingent election. This has never happened in the modern era before, but if nobody gets the required 270 electoral votes... What okay. happens is Congress actually decides who the next president would be. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's never happened before, but they do have a process for that uh, scenario. It In says case here, it happens. It says here it would be hotly contested and historic, of course. Quote, Congress has a set process to decide the president in that scenario which would undoubtedly come after a slew of court challenges in key states oh, aimed at challenging the election results. End quote. But it could happen. Well, thank you. Thank (laughs) you for that. Okay. Some new information. I did not know that. Yeah. U.S. presidential election day tomorrow. What do you think is going to happen? Are you worried about it at all? Impacts for Canada? I mean, there's all kinds of questions we, we could throw at you. I'm always curious to know what you're thinking about when it comes to this election campaign. Donald Trump. Kamala Harris, I really don't have any idea what's what's going to happen. I, uh, as they say, there are more questions than answers. That's that's what I would say. I'm just being open and honest with you. And when it comes to anything involving Donald Trump and making predictions, 
I'll I'll be open and honest again. I have a very bad track record when it comes to predicting what's going to happen with anything that involves Donald Trump. Uh, I remain amazed at the at the resilience of his candidacy. Uh, I didn't think he was going to win the first time. Oh, certainly wasn't alone there uh, back in 2016 when he was running against Hillary Clinton. And, um, you know, I was wrong then. So were a lot of other people. I was in good company. Uh, And like some of the previous callers, I thought after January 6th and what happened on January 6th in the United States, I thought, well, like that has to be it. That has to be the end for Trump. He'll never come back for that. I remember saying to myself, and again, you know, look, I'm wrong again. So maybe I should, you know, I'm just, I've, I've resigned from making predictions when it comes to Donald Trump. I, I, you know, I just look at all the things that he has had working against him, impeachments and lawsuits and criminal cases and felony convictions and, you know, huge financial penalties imposed on him. And yet, despite it all, I mean, here he is. In the final hours of an election campaign that seems too close to call, I I think it is um, it's a remarkable story, really, and I think it would be um, a political comeback for the ages. I mean, let's face it, uh, what he's been accused of, what he's been convicted of, you would think it would be more than enough to sink any candidate for president, and yet... So many uh, of his supporters, they just don't care. It doesn't bother them. They're, they're willing to look past it all. And and he's their candidate. And, and they're with him through the good times and the bad times. And there have been a lot of bad times for that guy. But he's still in the race. And uh, he could win it all. Or maybe Kamala Harris wins. Who you know, is thrust into this after Joe Biden stepped aside. And, uh, you know, if Kamala Harris wins, it would be history. It would be history making. And the United States would have a a woman president for the first time and uh, a woman of mixed race at that. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you hope will happen? Any concerns, any worries about the election and its aftermath? I mean, think about how this could impact Canada. Oh, so many ways. I mean, they're right next door. Our Our most important neighbor our friends and our neighbors. Please there, share your thoughts today. What, what, what do you think is going to happen with this thing? one 2577 Talk back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. one 2577 It's Talk Back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. U.S. politics, big story, huge, huge story uh, with the election tomorrow, U.S. presidential election tomorrow. Alberta politics, Alberta fighting with Ottawa again, this time over the oil and gas sector. Share your thoughts on that if you want. Lots of time to take your calls at one 668 2577 Kathy in Airdrie. Hi, Kathy. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Kathy. Thanks for calling. Good. What's on your mind? Good. My, um, I have a lot of family that live in the U.S. and all different corners. Uh, they're definitely voting Democrat tomorrow, and they've been waiting in lines for three hours to get their votes in. I know today the voting stations are closed until tomorrow again, uh, but they're definitely concerned that if uh, Trump gets in, there's going to be uh, a lot of chaos in their country. Okay. Even if Trump doesn't get in, there could be chaos, Kathy. There, right. it, most definitely there can be because I think that Trump supporters aren't or won't, won't, won't believe uh, that he's lost uh, if he loses. And uh, it, But I, I do feel for my family all living down there, they've gone through, uh, you know, they're going through uh, abortion rights for women. They're, they've taken the books out of the schools in Florida. Uh, and that's a DeSantis issue. Um, but the Republicans seem to have turned into more of a MAGA party instead of a Republican party. Right. That it's about the uh, the, the personality is being driven by one man, that it's the Donald yes. Trump party. Right. Yeah, it's the Donald Trump party. Exactly. I, I do Donald wonder how big a factor 
the reversal of Roe v. Wade back in 2022 is going to be. I, I wonder if that's going to motivate a lot of women to get out and vote for Kamala Harris. I think it will. I'm, I'm hoping it, it will. will. Uh, I mean, will. Okay. typically I'm a fiscal conservative. Uh, I like Danielle Smith. There's some things I don't agree with her about, but that's, you know, in, in Canada, that's how I am. In the States, I probably would be, but there's no way I would ever vote for somebody like Trump. Okay. And what is it? Is it just, if you could nail it down to your dislike for the man, what, what is it? Just to... Well, I don't think that uh, he represents the United States, uh, the people of the United States. He's okay. a criminal. He's, okay. I just, I just don't feel he's good for the country. I don't think he's good for the world. I think he's a ticking time bomb. Dangerous. Okay, fair enough. Dangerous. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, dangerous. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ayaz, Ayaz in Calgary. Hi there. Yes. Hi. Hi, Rob. Hi there. Yeah, good to hear from you. Uh, good to hear you, too. I just want to say first that uh, I do listen to your show every time. And oh, I thank you for that, providing too. what a wonderful platform. Well, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Do you want to talk about the U.S. election or Alberta? Yes, I, this, or, yeah, okay. Today okay. is my first time calling, and the reason is such an interesting topic. I uh, would like to say that I, although I don't want to and I don't like Trump, but the way things are going, I think Trump going to definitely win, no matter okay. whoever votes whatever. And why he do you think Trump is going to win? I ask, why do you think Trump is going to win? Two reasons. Okay. First, if he has what he has gone through so far, you know, from last time till now, you know, doing all sorts of things and getting uh, convicted and all that, but he get away every time with everything, right? He's a big crook. So there is a reason behind it. If you okay. cannot criminalize him or stop him what he did last time and after that he's still able to fight for election that's one indication yes there is a huge support someone is definitely in u.s at their interests lying with him so they're gonna try their best to bring him back that's the one okay reason. okay all right if he can get away with everything he will get away again all right Second, okay internationally yep. What I think, yes. and internationally, uh, people, you know, talking because I'm originally from Pakistan, so we, there is an interest of making Israel very strong in coming years in that area. Israel going to be, you know, representative of U.S. and of course, Trump would definitely do that. Trump would have a major role in that. So that will be the new politics internationally, going with Russia, Israel, and U.S. with the Trump in it. So I believe mm. that's, that's my take on that. There are two very okay. strong reasons that you're going to see Trump again. All right. Okay. You've laid out the case. We'll see what happens in the coming days. <laughs> yeah. I, I not, thank you. But- Okay, okay. Right. I thank you so much for your call and your kind words. I ask you call again sometime and keep listening. Thanks again. All right, we'll stop here and then uh, a couple of more calls before the top of the hour wind up this Monday edition of Talk Pack here on News Radio. to know. Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Right back to the phones. We're a little tight on time here. Just a few minutes left on the Monday Talk Back. George in uh, Calgary. Thanks for calling. George, what's your opinion today, George? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, just quickly, uh, just quickly on the um, election. I mean, I used to, I wouldn't care, but Canada's so tied with the U.S., that you know it, unfortunately it does affect us so you know, i mean ideally harris wins but if trump wins we're going to be dealing with a huge amount of uh you know tariffs and and changing of agreements and so on and we'll be 
on a bended knee towards the states again. Um, hmm. On the oh, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll jump to the um, on the sure. um, yep. uh, on Smith's uh, uh, piece there. There there's a there's a problem there, and I think uh, your listeners are missing missing a, a huge number of pieces on that. And I'm sorry, I, we're so short of time. Like I do my no, that's okay. Yeah, I'll give you a minute or so on this. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, there's. We're not Canada's not already meeting its uh, its agreements uh, on on emissions. Um, right, right. I'm sorry, I'm just writing writing this down here. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull that up again. Um, so <laughs> the problem with that is there's two things that's going to happen here. There's I think I've mentioned this before in one of our talks. There there's the CBAM, which is the um, um, from the European Union, which is if we're not meeting, Europe will. Uh, charging a uh, what would we call to uh, um, uh, if, if they would impose a charge and port based on, on carbon contact there. So oh, okay, okay. So so there's a charge. So we're, if we're trying to export and we're a resource country, we try to export our stuff, then there's going to be a problem. And our biggest trading partner, the U.S., they are actually looking at the U.S. border uh, carbon adjustment. And, and carbon adjustment, yes, yes, yes. Way, yeah, and it's going to be doing the same thing as the CBAM. So if we start increasing, and we don't meet our um, commitments on the um, on the um, on, on, the, on emissions uh, reduction, yeah, commitments on that. And I'm not even getting into the healthcare and stuff on that. Like I said, I, I, I realize we're short of time here, but that they they'll be charging us, and so mm. you know, it, it just sort of loses that. And just that one last point, I keep on hearing people talk about the CO two is good for the plants. That's only in greenhouses. That because they can control the humidity, they control everything else. CO two causes the, with the heat and the moisture loss and the, the expansion of the um, with the little holes in the plants and so on. And and grains once once temperatures get up around forty degrees Celsius, which they will be, where our grain project loses nutrition and so on. So, and some of and the yields definitely drop okay. there too. Sorry, I know All there's right. so much there. And I that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, a lot to take in, but I really appreciate your call, George. I wish we had more time, but we do We yeah. do have to jump. Thank you. It'll be Joe in uh, Kitchener's last call of the day, the best for last today. Joe. Hey, Rob. Um, I'm Thank worried you. about the election. Uh, Trump you is are, a, right? uh, a narcissistic, uh, demented psycho, so um, he's dangerous <laughs> okay. to everybody. Um, but I'm a little concerned about Harris not being clear about her cross-border trade policy with Canada she might end up being worse than Trump um, that's a big that's a big red flag for me and uh, kudos to uh, Danielle Smith for telling uh, the clown and its stupid puppet to go shove it um, I, I'm all in support of uh, uh, Alberta expo- exploiting those resources on behalf of all of Canadians so that's all I have for today Rob thanks so much all right very good Joe very good yeah tomorrow's the big day I mean we're going to talk about this Tomorrow, probably all week, it'll be a, a topic one way or another for topics uh, on the talk back. It, I mean, it's it's such a huge and uh, important story. And, you know, the grand finale, you could say, is tomorrow with the U.S. presidential election campaign wrapping up. Or maybe it's the, the start of a, a brand new, very unknown chapter. And we'll see what comes the day after or in the weeks after. Special coverage uh, tomorrow night across your news radio stations on U.S. presidential election night. Make sure you tune in for that if you're out and about. The latest breaking news is coming up next on a very busy news day. I'm Rob Snow here with David Smith. This is News Radio.